just got killed by a Daewoo Lanos, motherfucker! How you like me now, huh? The history of Daewoo is one mired by success and failures. Once a prominent player in the international car market, Daewoo was able to overcome many economic obstacles to become a multi-billion dollar conglomerate that came crashing down in the late 90s. But what happened? First and foremost, Daewoo is not a car company. Although it made cars from 1978, Daewoo started its life as a small manufacturer of textile and clothing machines, whatever they are, and grew into an umbrella company manufacturing anything from cars, to buildings, to batteries, to assault rifles, to mini washing machines, oh, you get the idea. In fact, at their peak, Daewoo had so many fingers in different pies that you'd have a hard time staying away from them, no matter where you went. To explain this though, you have to start at the beginning. The Daewoo group was founded by Kim Woo-young in March 1967. A son of a provincial governor, he worked as a newspaper boy, where at times he'd have to support his whole family just with the money he was bringing in from his rounds. Now you have to remember that South Korea at this time was still a developing country, ruled by a dictator who was coincidentally tutored by Woo-young's father at a young age. Remember this part, because it will come into play later. In 1973, the GDP of South Korea was $13 billion. In comparison, at the same time, Japan had a GDP of over $432 billion, and Germany, that at the time was still split in two, had a GDP just shy of $400 billion. So basically, Korea was broke. And as a young entrepreneur looking to make a name for himself, Wu Young was not in a good place. Still, after graduating, Wu Young joined a small trading company and successfully managed, alongside five other employees that he smooth-talked his way into coming with him, to splinter off and form Daewoo using his, how do we say, connections in both his former University of Yonsei as well as political backing from the government led by the former student of his father, Wu Young was able to buy up a few companies. Now I can't find a record of what these companies were but I'm assuming they still exist as a division of the Daewoo group. Now although buying up companies with most likely corrupt government officials behind your back sounds hella shady, Wu Young was known for acquiring companies on the brink of collapse or bankruptcy and transforming them into successful business ventures. So on a morals chart, we could put him about here. By the 1990s, the Daewoo conglomerate was the second biggest company in Korea. This meant that Wu Young's business was competing with companies such as Samsung, Hyundai and LG, all of which are hugely profitable at the time of writing. But now there was trouble. In 97, Daewoo hit major issues during the Asian financial crisis, with companies shutting doors and laying off employees. Daewoo was sure to do the same thing, right? Yeah, no. Instead, the Daewoo Corporation decided to expand. Whereas competitors were downsizing and most of the top four owed more than four times what their companies were worth, Wu Young bought out his huge titanium balls, slapped them on the desk, and added 14 more firms into his Frankenstein monster of a company. Uh, unfortunately, he probably did this thinking through his balls too, as when 98 rolled around, the Daewoo Corporation took on 40% more debt and was losing about $450 billion a year. Now, I'm no economist, but when I see numbers these big on my screen with the word loss next to them, I for sure would start selling parts of my company at double speed. Of course, you'd expect a man like Wu Young, who finished school in one of the best universities of Korea with a degree in economics to fit this in a jiffy, and get it back on track, but, um, yeah, no. The mad lad packed up his balls, a metric shit ton of cash, and booked it to Vietnam, leaving his company bankrupt back in South Korea. Now, his former employees were not happy and soon started putting up wanted posters around the buildings in Seoul for his arrest. Wu Young was soon placed on Interpol's wanted list. Personally, I think shit has really hit the fan once your name starts appearing alongside Saddam Hussein and Osama Bin Laden, but maybe I'm just being too critical of Wu Young. Although not having killed anyone, so far as we know, Wu Young had left behind his company in so much debt that it collapsed, destabilized the South Korean economy to the point where the amount owed was in the trillions of won. Surprisingly, Wu Young returned to Korea in 2005, where he was soon placed under arrest for embezzlement and account fraud. 21 trillion won, about 22 billion US dollars, was seized from various bank accounts, and he was fined another additional 10 million won. He was sentenced to jail for 10 years, though due to medical reasons he was reduced to 8.5 years. In 2008, he was granted amnesty by the then Korean president, Ro Nu Hyun. For those of you who don't know, this meant that of the 10 years he was originally sentenced to, Wu Young only had to spend three of them locked up. During his trial, he was quoted as saying that he had hurt the nation and was ready to accept whatever the authorities have in store for him. He lived a quiet life afterwards, eventually dying on the 9th of December 2019. But enough about history. What did he leave behind? 
Well, Daewoo was responsible for the building of the Walsong nuclear power plant, the Malaysia KLCC tower, and the Daejangdong municipal waste incineration plant, as well as many other large-scale industrial projects. They manufactured the Daewoo CPC-300, one of the first Korean personal computers, the Daewoo FX-2112 supercruiser, a bus widely used across South Korea and Japan, and the Daewoo mini series of micro washing machines that you can hang from the wall. Probably the most interesting business venture for Daewoo was their motor division, responsible for cranking out such beauties as the Matiz, the Lanos, and the Numbria. They effectively acted as a subsidiary for GM, even renaming themselves to GM Korea after the conglomerate went under. Although ceasing production in 2002 after being acquired by Tata Motors, Daewoo's still existing contract with the Ukrainian car manufacturer after Zaz allowed for the manufacture of Daewoo Lanos under the name Zaz Sens in Ukraine to this day. Anyway, if you've watched until the end of this video, I wanted to say that I really appreciate that. Please let me know down in the comments how you like this new infographic type of video and hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video.